Right, so for today's session, we will be looking at uh, manual handling, and you should have gotten, um, I think, the PowerPoint to that. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right? So I, I did decide on the manual handling, I guess, um, and the reason really is not because of today's work, it really is because of next week's work. Sort of like the same idea when we had started to do um, noise, right? The first part of noise is pretty simple. And then um, as the weeks went along, you know, the idea was that you had so much of calculation and stuff with the noise, right? So this is almost the same uh, pattern here for, right, let me close this up, right? The same pattern with um, with this current less than anyway. In fact, today's class is relatively simple and more or less um, a reading exercise, right? Of course, I do have a passive plan, so we kind of need to go into that as soon as possible, right? But if you had a look at the whole handout, and again, um, and then, you know, as the weeks roll by, um, perhaps at the end of this month still, we can probably start radiation. And then there are some topics inside there felt to be very simple, like um, like violence and stress. Things I feel that, um, that even if you didn't study them, you could have written an answer for them. You know, like how do you reduce stress? How do you reduce violence in the workplace? So to me, even if you didn't study those things, uh, if the question did come, uh, you can still kind of get the marks out of it anyway. But there's no way that you can get marks for the calculations if you are not taught the calculations, right? So that's the logic here anyway in getting into. I think this would probably be the hardest one. And from here it gets, um, well, it's the hardest one, the hardest last lesson. And then from there it gets back to be pretty much easy stuff, right? All in all, though, today's lesson, if you have your book as well, um, I made sure to write this strictly with the with the syllabus. So if you have your syllabus, the book does a nice job of it. I think it's page 184. Most likely I'm wrong with that page as well. It's probably 259. Yes, I have a piece of design. So I have a piece of design. So I have a piece of Right, um, basic understanding of the human musculoskeletal system. And the book has a nice paragraph on that. Um, the types of injuries and ill health condition. For example, work-related upper limb disorders and the different types that they may have. You'll see some types on the slide. Examples of jobs and workplaces that give rise to these injuries. So, um, I would say no, but before or even, you know, in the session, I guess I can see what I'm saying in truth, but um, there, there is a guidance for this that you need to go download. Um, I can show you, if I make a time. So um, you know, there's so much and can generate movement around the joint nerves and muscles so we have some 
right? So mechanization, maybe for example, like um, some sort of conveyor system, right? But there's still an operator at the end of the conveyor. So the process has been mechanized, but it still has human input in it. Whereas, as you can probably guess, automation is free of human input. It's totally automatic, right? It's totally robotic then, if you want to use a different word. And it has more or less made the human job or the human part of the job no longer necessary, right? So in case you ever run out of ideas, you know, you, you talk about reducing work pace and job rotation and um, using the right force on the tool and you're out of ideas. This is two ideas here, mechanization and automation, right? Two additional ideas to reduce the risk associated with um, tools and reduce the injuries associated with those tools anyway. The rest you should know, right? Job rotation, adjusting the work routine, training so that employees will develop good habits and probably using the proper techniques as well. Right? So the last one for today, because I do have a passive plan, uh, we would stop at, um, let me just take a look at, we would stop today at slide 50. Just getting into, this is not the end though, right? So we have slide 29 there. Uh, but just getting into manual handling, we're going to leave manual handling for next week, right? Anyway, so this, this screen equipment, um, guidance examples. So as I mentioned to you, if you might be able to spot this word here, but what you really need to get is L26. Right? In fact, no, this is it. This is the cover sheet here. And if you can make it out there, it's here. L26. I had to stretch the image anyway. Right? So this is what you want to go look for. L26. The guidance um, that accompanies. In fact, it's really more or less like an A cup. Right? But I know they have guidance and regulation there. But once you have the letter L, it's more or less like an A cup that accompanies the display screen equipment regulations. Right? So let me just go back there with that, right? So this is screen um, equipment. So these are broadly grouped under three areas, assessment, control, and purpose. Um, musculoskeletal injury and discomfort. We have mentioned those before. Eye and eyesight effect, fatigue and stress. These are what the law focuses on, the disc screen equipment regulation, right? Um, anyway, let me take it from here. So musculoskeletal injury and discomfort from poor work organization, design layout and posture, a small minority of people suffer work-related upper limb disorders, including RSIs, mentioned all of these already, right? Tenor signovitis, mostly commonly reported or the most commonly reported form of repetitive strain injuries, usually hand and wrist. Prevention is based on, a, on general ergonomic principles that we all saw that on the table before including workplace design with ergonomically correct desks and chairs, provision of rest breaks, instruction to staff and adjustment of the workstation, the need for pace work with breaks, and the reporting of symptoms of the work-related upper limb disorders, right? Anyway, just to kind of slow down here, right? So eye and eyesight effect, as I mentioned before, is um, a part of the display screen equipment regulations and it's regulations for so I'll slow down because I have noticed the Nibosh papers asking for that, that students be aware that this is regulations for, right? So in other words, and just to make sure that the worker, sorry, not the worker, the employer has to um, have the workers do an eye and eyesight test uh, before work and again during work as well. So work with display screen equipment or we have visual display screen units that's a vdu there does not cause does not cause eye damage employees with pre-existing or deteriorating vision defects may become more aware of them at least that is the theory anyway if corrected defects can make work at a display screen more tiring if uncorrected sorry stressful visually fatiguing than would otherwise be the case, right? So there's a need then to do the eyesight test, the pre-screening of the eyesight test anyway. Fatigue and stress, right? Many symptoms associated with DSE work 
reflect stresses arising from the work activity, including poor work design, poor organization, inadequate support, and not supporting the chain, right? These can include lack of control of work by the user, underutilization of skills, high speed repetitive working, social isolation. Risk can be improved by careful design, selection, and arrangement of the display screen equipment. Good design of the user's workplace, environment, task, training, consultation, and the involvement of the user. A lot of these things are things we covered before, right? Fatigue and stress, other issues. Use of DSC has occasionally been associated with hazard risk, such as epilepsy, facial and upper body dermatitis, electromagnetic radiation, bites, pregnancy, nursing, of course, um, complication in pregnancy is the proper thing to say there. The above are largely unfounded. Employees, managers should have access to competent guidance or advice. So discuss with equipment, assessment of risk from a DSC use, factors to consider. And this um, is where it gets interesting with the last 15 minutes to go. So what you need to consider is equipment, the environment, the interface between the computer and the operator and the user or the user and a lot of other factors that I have on this slide. So I can probably just go to it. This slide is just telling you that the law for display screen equipment is um, the display screen equipment regulation 1992. It has been amended for those of us who are unaware of this by the Health and Safety Miscellaneous Amendment Regulation 2002. And in some books, you may see this side the years 1993. Don't get confused if you see that, and some books you see it as 1992. The, the idea behind it is that um, the, the, the law was assented to on the 31st of December 1992, so it really does take effect on the 1st of January 1993, right? So don't get confused if you see 92, 93. It's just when you know, it came into force, and you see it came into force the 1st of January 1993, but some books and some papers say 92, some say 93. Anyway, it's just a matter of one day, you know, the night of that day, the night and then the following day would have taken effect. Right? Um, so, um, a nice question to ask would have been, but I have the answers here. A nice question to ask is if we could have carried out like a display screen equipment assessment of this workstation. And uh, the way I will do it, I think next week when I start the fresh hour, I may do over one of this. But the way I will do it, now these things could come for 10 marks. I guess if it's 10 marks, the way I would have done it, I would have taken, you know, one aspect. One aspect meaning the equipment. And I'll try to get like five on that. Maybe five, maybe too much if it's just 10 marks. I'm going to try to split up if it's 10 marks. Maybe three on the equipment three on the environment, three on the interface, and that's nine already there. That's how I would do it anyway, right? So that's what I have on this slide. This slide, you have what I'm talking about, right? And also, again, I'll say it now for the third time. Again, this here is really L26. This is really what they have in the guidance anyway. So what do you consider? Um, let me see if I could come in a bit because we're almost close to finishing. I guess I could wrap it up with this slide. I was hoping to read slide 50, but um, I guess I would have to wrap it up there, right? Because I wanted to show you a passy but two, right? I could try to wrap it up here or any one of these pictures anyway, right? So let's go. I would give you a start. Let's try to get, um, let's try to get three on, well, let's start with the easy one, I guess. Three on the chair. Let's try to focus on the chair a bit. Um, and again, like, what would be three things you want to consider? about the chair that, and I said I know the answer there, right? But, <laughs> sorry, I don't get that. Oh, when I see, I'll go for the marker. When you go for the marker, you don't get to go back to the screen. Just set the screen first, right? Um, right, so yeah, I'm trying to get the marker there. So three on the chair. So what do you notice about the chair? Three ergonomic factors about the chair. The chair may not be good or all that good. Right, so it must be able to give you a certain measure of back support, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you check it up and stuff, you must say that it, the chair 
must have the curvature of the human spine. Spine, the okay. spine is a bit S-shaped anyway, right? So that's why you want to say that, right? Um, so I just give it three on the chair, right? So I want to say it must have the, I just put the S here, the S shape of the human spine. What about head support? Do you have any head support here? No, but it should no. have a head rest, right? So it should have a certain amount of head um, support. Now I can actually give you 10 on that chair, but if we say we're making up like a 10 mark question, when you go to workstation, you can probably just get three on the chair, right? Other thing is that the chair must be able to rotate. Some books say um, swivel, that's spelled with a S, swivel. It must be able to rotate like about a 360 degree to sort of minimize any movement on the spine, right? Oh, taking a lot of time for this. Um, after this, we might have time to do the one on the passive. Okay, so let's go. So that's on the chair. I can give you more. Like, you can notice it's like footrest something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Push on all of those. Like what about hand rest? You know, what is the hand rest missing? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to draw mm -hmm. here, right? The hand rest and stuff missing. I said literally, I could give you about, about ten on the chair. Let's go to the desk. What are some things you want to consider about the desk? Um, desk. Yeah, it's a big computer. It's a new It's a new glare. Right. Okay. Okay. But the glare will be more the monitor. So the desk mm -hmm. itself, right? If you say focus on the desk, yeah. the desk you wanna. Probably said it does. The desk should have been adjustable, which this one is not. As I was mentioning here, a lot of ergonomically um, desks they have in the office, they are now adjustable. If you have not seen them, I could try to describe them here for you. There's like two levers right here with some of those desks, and you can just turn those levers, and there's a bit of like a, a, a like a, a distance here that this piece could go up or down. Then this flat piece here, the desktop there, could go a bit up or down when you just adjust these these levers or these knobs there anyway so the desk should be adjustable i'll show you miss this one another one i'll give you one the just the desk supposed to be free of clutter like how this one is uh -huh. up. a lot of the time they say for for poor ergonomics if they put in the word clutter there right a lot of the times of poor for poor uh, um, ergonomics they need them to adapt to like an awkward posture may be the chair but it could also be that the person has a whole bunch of stuff on the desk kind of like my desk here right they <laughs> <laughs> have a lot of stuff on the desk so they, they do recommend and this is a good answer to the exam that you buy a um what do you call it a roller desk or those space savers right mm -hmm. um so that's a good idea about the desk uh maybe one for the desk again um i suppose appropriately positioned Right, you know, uh, maybe if you look at how this one is positioned here, appropriate. Yeah, I think position. it's like it, it have no space between his leg and the desk. It's a, right, right. So then, yeah, so some oh. leg room then. Right? So yeah. it does allow some measure of a leg room as well, right? Okay, but I think you're getting it, right? I have to cut this session a bit short. Let's go to the one you are talking about, the monitor, right? So the monitor is easy, and this is the one you get to talk about when you talk about glare. Right, this is how easy a DSC question is. A DSC question for exam is very easy. That's why they give it, sometimes they give it like 15 marks because there's a lot of stuff you can say about a workstation then. So you can talk about things like the glare, anything as you all know about the monitor. Right? The height. Right. The height. height. Good. Do, do, okay, so that's the eye. The eye, yeah. Right, must be eye level, very good. So this is supposed to be height. Sorry for those who be following on this, right? So the height. Okay. So another one, I'll end up for this one. Another one with respect to glare. And um, as you mentioned, glare, another thing this way the monitor is actually shadows. Right? Shadows is also a factor um, when you talk about the monitor. Like if there's a shadow on, on the monitor. So glare is an answer, but also shadow is an individual answer. And I'll give you, because the other slide has it, that when you look at L26, you'll see it. A lot of it have to do with the software now, like with the font that they use on the software itself. Right? I lost my marker there. The, um, right? So the font. Right. The font. No, wait, the, I'm not just sure what somebody marked. The marker turned it back into the cursor. Right? Um, so the font and the font size and like the italics and all of those things are all things you need to consider as well. No, I lost the marker, right? But it is the marker turning back into the cursor. So 
I'll go to the next slide because I think you have the idea anyway. Right? And um, well, the marker seemed to come now, now that I wanted to <laughs> Should go to the next slide. All right. Um, right. Let's get it to go to the next slide, right? But I know you all have you may have the handout. Okay, so workstation analysis, right? So this is what I was trying to do here. But remember, this is just um, a slide that I made from L26. So you talk about the screen. Is it appropriate, adjustable, free of glare reflection? The keyboard, separate, adjustable, legible, work surface, adequate, large enough, free from reflection, the work chair, the footrest, software or information display. Is it appropriate, feedback systems, no um, undisclosed monitoring. So this is something now, this point here, um, I could spend a whole day and talk about this, right? This is about surveillance. This is about the government then, or, or Google and Facebook collecting information on you. You understand this? I'm sure you all have done that. Like, um, I'm sure you all have been, you have experience, like when maybe you log into a page, right? And then when you log back on the page, you see what you was looking there for. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever had a weird experience? I know Janet had some, and I had some. I'm I, had some. <laughs> I have a couple of smart TVs in the house, well, about three. So sometimes we we do if they could, but sometimes I could be thinking about something. Like they're I listening am. to you. They're listening <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, but, but how do you want to think? But no, but sometimes yeah, yeah like even if you were talking about something, and you it'll just in, pop up on your phone. It'll pop up. It'll come up as like what you were searching for, right? So you know that that is something that is a whole idea about security and stuff like that. But I'll have to stop it here. I wanted to show you a past paper. Wow, where did the time go on this one, right? Um, let me take a just show you a passipa here. Uh, hopefully I have it saved. I got a passipa for you all this week. Um, not there, not there, not there. Okay, let me just try to get it back. I'll try to get it back from the thing. But it was one of the older passipas, right? Um, I don't know if anybody even have it. So you have to let me know if you have this one. When it come up, I'll share. This is um, January 2014, right? If you don't have it, you can let me know. Um, I suppose I have another class after this one at the end of this whole day today. I could try to email it to you all. I'll have Janet send it to you all um, next week. Yeah, email it. So, I'm not too sure if I have that one. Yeah, that's a weird one, I'll tell you. And, um, you know, I had it down here in order to show again these things you have to you just have to normally share it on um on the you have to load it up before you actually have a Zoom session to share it. And I did put it on the share screen, but then sometimes when you look back for it, this the share screen only holds a certain amount of items at a time. Um and it still didn't come up there, right? No, it, it didn't come up. Uh, at least it's not in the share screen where I can say I can share it with, with you as yet, right? Uh, it normally would have to come up on its own and then I'll have to share it with you, right? But I suppose if we don't have it, then it's still coming up there, right? It's still um, uploading anyway. The other way to do it is I'd have to take out some stuff from the share screen. So let me try to do that now. I'm trying to take out some stuff from the share screen. So that it makes room on the shared screen for you to see. Right? Um, nonetheless, though, this was a good one about the display screen equipment. Right? I am seeing it, but it's not on the share screen to share. Right? I'm seeing it here, but it's not on um, it's not loaded on the share screen. Right, at least it might give me a couple of minutes again with it. Um, but it was on this screen equipment, so I thought it was a nice one and not too much of a hard one either. Right, granted, um, next week, I, I think next week we could probably meet one of the first, um, one of the first good concepts that I wanted to cover. I think I see it on the share screen, all right? So, um, that would be the Mac tool, MEC. Next week, we're going to try to finish up this bit about uh, this screen equipment and start uh, manual handling. There's a lot of questions on that, endless. Uh, but 
just at the end of that, you have the introducing um, something called a manual handling assessment chart. And there, there's a couple of questions on that. Right? You all have seen this one, January 2014? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Yeah, we've seen it. Right. Yeah. Okay, right here. They just had to clear some stuff and it's just screen ready to come up. So now how do I get it to go down? So it's, um, I guess, based on the time, we just have to just take a read of it. Let me just take my, um, these faces off and I'll be able to adjust it from there. All right, so just take a read of it, right? Uh, based on the time that we have anyway, we have to, I wouldn't be able to do any sort of explanation, or, I guess, on it, right? So it's a communication organization. Um, these kind of key questions is that you have to take back and take full send back. Right. Like I said, I don't have time to do all of it now, but you kind of just like job rotation or two in hours. You probably could, but you had a finish project. You need to answer coming out of today's class. I'll try to give you three, maybe one minute. I really have to get beneficial there. Is that you may have to insist that it would be smaller than like between 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., right? So like as opposed to like, you know, like uh, addressing the this equipment part of this because remember they are now they are they are, they are now by a computer right so computer you need to address like the monitor so like when you say make sure the monitor is suitable height you need to have the center, the monitor center. they didn't have any answers really whenever you get it anyway but you need to make it really specific right um a lot of call operators, they have, um, you need to talk about the chair needs to be comfortable, all of that. But you just need to tie it back into the setting of the telecommunication center anyway, right? And you could probably ask an adaptation. So, um, I suppose we're going to discuss it. I'll probably pick up one. And I'll see what I'm going to do. But kind of research. I think a lot of those operators, um, they have like a hands free. Um, you know, system to talk into the, the call center operators anyway, yeah. right? So that, I think I'm seeing it here, right? So headsets, right? Headsets, so I need to get up into to get three, the computer, but make it back to the call center and the operator and the environment and lighting and temperature. I mean, I, I could actually do it, but they have to make it tie back into the operations at the call center, right? So um, I'll end this one here. Remember, everyone. Um, well, we only have we have six persons on, right? So remember, exams is carded for the seventh of October, right? We would not be forcing anybody to write an exam. I think anybody who knows know that we do this at the school. We just let you know that exams is available, and we would be booking for exams in the month of October once. I guess, you know, schools are open back in Trinidad as well, right? If not, we'll have to wait and see, right, what what Nibosh will do, right? Hopefully schools will open back in September anyway, right? That does locally, of course, right? So we would be booking for the exam. And again, what that means is that if you're sizing up to write an exam, uh, please remember to get some studies done. Um, the way I do it, and I know the folks who are, I think I have Keisha and there still, right? The way I do it is that um, the way I study is not the way I teach. The way I would study, I would go to the participants first, right? I would have gone to this participant first and then, um, you know, see what I could do. And what I can't do, then I'll go back to the handout, okay. home, right? My method was the, the passive, but the handout. And then last and not least, the book, right? If you have a lot of time, you use the book. But if you're studying for an exam, the book is basically like a reference point, right? Um, so I said that to tell you what you should not be doing. You should not be, again, this is just me. I mean, I say not, this is really not, this is my technique, right? You know, some students come up to exam, they try to go and read the whole book and memorize the whole book, right? That's really not a good technique for an exam like the diploma, which is more based on analysis then, right? A good technique is past papers first. 
handout second, and then when the handout don't have what you want to get, you can go back go to, to the, the book, book. right? Uh, as I said before, normally if we were in class, those who know me, I normally use the book for certain chapters, but we normally use the book when the classes get started. When they use the book first, it means you have plenty of time. But if you have um, two months to prepare for exam four, like let's say I am revising what you see there. Let's say I want to revise LEB systems. I know a lot of you all do it. I do have Diane online this morning, but um, you know, some of the older students, if you write if you write an LEB system, you go and you get like the latest or the the last five years of papers. Not even five. Some people just do 20, 19, 18, 17, and you just do all the LEB questions, right? And again, if you couldn't do it, let's say looking at this piece and you couldn't do it, but then you go back to the handout, the handout didn't have it, you go back to the book and you write this up, you write it up as an actual question because we know that Nibosh has a weakness and that they repeat a lot of questions anyway, right? So that's a good strategy where you would um, pick a topic, right? Pick a topic that you like, right? And do the questions on it, right? I don't know if uh, we have mentioned this enough for you all, as I know we do it on a Saturday, but then we haven't had long Saturday classes. What, what you should know is that you don't have to know all the chapters to pass on. And if you know that, yeah, yes, right? so you know that right? I mean, section B is uh, not compulsory. Section B is chosen. So you don't have to know all the questions, sorry, all the chapters to pass. Rightfully speaking, um, you can pass by just doing about six good questions, especially three of those six is in section B, and the section B carries 20 marks, right? So ideally, uh, we, we tell students to prepare like about eight good chapters, like the back of your hand and the other two, you can have an idea of it because you, you're not going to do all the questions in section B, so only three questions to do. If you had prepared for LEB, then there was no need to do all five questions. Yeah, this one is on... Um, the respiratory system, part of I think B1, right? Uh, like dust and concentration and stuff. But if, if you can get three of that done, then you do have to know every single chapter by, by heart, right? So you can keep it to the back of your mind. It's not all chapters by heart. You already need eight chapters really prepared like the back of your hand. Or when I say chapters, but work like the back of your hand. And the other two, you could be like sketch, sketchy chapters, meaning that Okay, meaning that you, that you didn't plan to do that anyway, right? And how they do it, just imagine that to you. They almost take the same strategy as your textbook in that, um, you know, uh, some things that are like um, element seven ends up coming as question seven, element eight sometimes ends up coming as question eight, element nine comes as question nine. So that may be an idea to help you. It may be it happens, you know, from, from year to year. All right, but uh, you could take, like I said, my idea is to take one or two chapters and have them, know them, um, and you start with the one that you like. You start like with the best chapter that you like. If it is um, B1 or B5 or B3, B3 I think was a nice one. And uh, that's how you start learning them and you start doing the participles on them and you'll be ready for the October exam nonetheless, right? But the idea is to start, um, you know, I, I, I used to do it, I mean, and this is too much of bad stories, but, but I used to do it, you know, like religiously, you know, like I wouldn't, um, like if I was studying, I, I wouldn't, my, like my thing was that, was that like, I wouldn't go to sleep, but I would study it. I'd, I'd gotten so accustomed to it then, right? That, um, that in my day, that studying was a part of the day then, right? If, if, I mean, if I was working fine and, you know, if I was, you know, probably taking a walk in the park or whatever have you. But in addition to those activities, studying was one of the activities that fit within the course of my day then, right? So like, you know, I'm not sure if that's what you want to do, but it's, I guess it's a good habit that you make study then a part of your day activities for the next two months anyway, right? And then um, for me, I told you that sometimes, and this was to my detriment, I mean, I think to the end where I would never count the hours. Initially, you could count the hours, one hour, two hours, but then there were some days when I studied whole day, eight hours in a day, right? Which, which is really not advised, right? But I suppose um, I suppose that is coming up closer to exam nonetheless anyway, right? So try to develop some sort of um, exam strategy because you don't want to be caught off guard. 
the best time to start is now you have um, you have basically three months so now is the time to start to start getting yourself prepared dedicate one to two hours a day to studies and you'll be I guess on your game coming up closer to the exam any questions for me here and I'll close up today's session no okay good right yeah. okay. thank you yeah I'll see you all back next week um like I said next week we'll have a little bit of calculation the first piece of calculation is hard the first piece of calculation is is really just counting numbers one to ten and whatever have you counted up you know adding up numbers to 20 right so the first piece of calculation that I'll have we should be able to reach that next week Saturday you have the handout you can read it out a bit you can probably stop at the VMAC tool if you're going to read piece of it or because each one of those things have their own calculations nonetheless right enjoy the rest of your day I'll see you all back um